as above, so below. Welcome to Connecting with Coincidence. I am your host, Bernard Beitman, MD. I'm a psychiatrist, and sometimes I'm a little crazy, and I have a good time with that. Um, and I hope you'll uh, you'll subscribe to our channel here. It really helps get uh, the synchronicity message out. Uh, the more people we have subscribed, and also if you like uh, this this interview uh, that helps a lot too and we enjoy your comments i usually respond to every comment uh, you make on these things um also my book meaningful coincidence is ready for purchase it's been around for almost a year and um we have the coincidence cafe which our guest uh, jenna has also been on um and i've uh, been a co-host of and it's a good place if you want to to talk about your own coincidence stories and um, it's every th third saturday of the month uh 11 a.m uh eastern time and the link is to get onto it is below is below here too so who do we have here today we have uh, a person of uh, a lot of different shapes and sizes um i uh, she she is probably best known but that's how i met her as anyways through the her being the coincidence the synchronicity fairy she's the synchronicity fairy and i'm dr coincidence so mm -hmm. we both spread the fairy dust of synchronicity around with wherever the, anybody wants to pick it up and even, even if they don't so that's part of what our life's thing is to do is increase people's awareness of synchronicity and jenna has a has a, a tiktok show where uh you can see all the varieties of the ways in which she presents herself as the synchronicity fairy uh and we'll see some of that today and who knows where during this interview it'll show up but we will see it jenna lamare uh which certainly sounds jenna of the sea even though she spells it M-E-R-E, -E, uh, is a multi-passionate creator who, weary, who wears many, and I'll say many, hats. Spiritual mentor, alignment coach, galactic light code artist, soul essence channel, and a charm caster. Is that enough for you? She's <laughs> most widely known for her viral TikTok synchronicity series where she plays the magical character as we described her, the synchronicity fairy. I'm not sure who's who in this, if which one is the real one, but she's so real as the synchronicity fairy. Uh, and she lives in Portland, Oregon with her partner, Patrick, who is a fantastic musician and their sweet little kitty who is of the moon uh, named Luna. You can find her at the synchronicity fairy on TikTok. So welcome, Jenna, to Connecting with Coincidence. And I'm so glad we found each other. Yeah. Uh, and here Thank we are. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. And here we are doing something called Connecting with Coincidence. That's my podcast. So uh, tell us a story, one of your many, 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 many synchronicity stories. And we'll start off with that and go someplace else. Okay. I think my favorite story has to do with, to me, the idea of manifestation is so linked to synchronicity. Um, and there's a big connection with ritual um, intention setting that has led to lots of really cool coincidences. And there was this um, one time, my last two partners, I have... Um, had come into my life in the kind of way, in a way that, um, that has been really, 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 really crazy. And they, they've involved, um, seeing psychics or doing some sort of ritual. The first one, I knew that Paul McCartney was coming to town. And this is important <laughs> because, um, he was coming on July 19th and 
in the springtime, I was like, okay, I'm going to call in a partner, went to a psychic. The psychic told me ahead of time that I was going to meet someone who was into finance. He was a protector, something to do with dragons. And he was a musician, but not currently in a band that I knew and that he um, was Asian. So living in Portland, Oregon, um, we're not a very diverse area here. And so um, because there were a few months before this, I was having lots and lots of um, people. I, I was telling everyone about this. I'm going to meet this person. I'm going to meet it. These are the criteria. And I'm going to do it by Paul McCartney, the concert that was coming. I bought two tickets, second row, which was very expensive to do. And so I was that confident that I was going to um, call in this person by exactly that date. So... <laughs> Fast forward a few months to, to July, it's the week of it. And I'm like, oh my God, it hasn't happened yet. What am I going to do? And um, and I was on dating sites. Again, all my friends are telling me or, or coach or telling me, oh my gosh, is this the guy? Is this the guy? That's your boyfriend. Every time we'd even see anybody that was Asian out. It was funny. Anyway, so the night before the due date of the date that I kept saying that this was going to happen, um, I get a little message that comes in and it's a little picture of an Asian guy with a guitar. And I'm like, okay, my friends are, are joking me. They know that I have this time criteria. Uh, so I thought it wasn't real. He gets on the phone. It's this real guy. His name was dragon in college protector part. He's was a police officer. He studied finance in, um, in college and, um, and where the coincidence comes in for this is one is like, he just came by the exact date, the day before the concert that I had been saying in my mind all the time. But then the, what we discovered is that inadvertently, when he told me his name, his name was Paul. And I had been saying, I'm going to find my soulmate by the Paul McCartney concert by the Paul McCartney on July 19th, but Paul July 19th, he comes July 18th and his name is Paul. Now that wouldn't be, that's cool. And I thought that was the best story I had until, um, I just have to segue into this other story too. Then we didn't work out. I mean, it was a great thing and it, it was meant to be for a time, but my current partner, uh, I went on Facebook and decided to write out to everybody. I did a live video and said, I'm calling in my partner. And I was so ballsy to do that because if he didn't happen, it would look really bad because I had said it to everybody. So I, I just did a whole video of everything that I wanted. I went to the beach and did a ritual with a friend at the time. My girlfriend then, her husband was named uh, Patrick. So all weekend long, I kept saying to her, well, I'm manifesting my partner. And I would say, when I get my Patrick, because again, that's her husband's name, we're going to double date. And when I get my Patrick, I just kept saying, I'm going to get my Patrick. And so, oh, I think it was a week later, another message comes in and it's my current partner. And so I inadvertently manifested him by name of Patrick. So very few people have I known that can say that they have manifested two people in by having done rituals and both inadvertently by names. So that's a pretty cool coincidence, I think. Yes. Yes. And when you say rituals, could you tell um, us a little bit more about what you mean by that? Yeah. Yeah. So the first one I saw a psychic um, where she was calling in a lot of the images of, you know, she got uh, like the the image of, of what Paul looked like. And she got the, just everything came through her. And I went up to the Rose garden in Portland and just did a, it was a little bit witchy. I would, I would say, um, and just called it in, uh, did a lot of things with, you know, rocks and crystals and, and that kind of stuff. The thing I did at the beach, um, Again, very, very ritualistic. Um, I really like to add ceremony into things. I think that it it bumps up all of our, you know, it just activates the field because that's the channel, the radio dial we all connect on is is love and in ceremony and presence and the now, that kind of stuff. 
And then, which kind of leads to the the synchronicity fairy thing too. That was another thing that I had actually done sort of a ritual on right before I started getting viral videos. Um, that one wasn't as much of kind of a witchy thing. It was, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Monroe Institute or the the Gateway pro, uh, program. Sure, they're, 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 they're about 20 minutes away from here. Yeah, I, I figured that they were probably close to you. So I um, have the Gateway um, Hemisync meditations. And so I, I used that and did some visualizations of... Uh, seeing myself go viral and what it would look like to, you know, have 99 plus things to have to do uh, or to, um, you know, messages and like what that would look like, what it would feel like. And so I did that about hmm, three or four days before I actually went viral. So I think ceremony has been a pretty big link for me, really making a, a deliberate um, anyway, so, so I then think coincidence is really great, uh, when obviously we're, we're not expecting it and this and that, but I like feeling like there is a hand in it. I like to put it out and allow for people to, I don't know. I, I, I feel like having, uh, wielding it a, a bit myself feels fun. That's well, that's that's where we're we're kind of getting to um is first being able to recognize that perhaps we accidentally create coincidences or that 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 we don't have to go to um far out realms which include god and universe which uh you know, there's always some mystery involved always some mystery so that's part of the story and it's the other part of it is people thinking it's all random, uh, but we play a, a part in it. And what you're describing is how uh, important uh, our part can be and that we can increasingly place ourselves in the role of responsible responsible for creating uh, synchronicities. We, we can do that, but it's, it's something that's part of learning to discover that. And you are talking about using ritual and intention with mm -hmm. those rituals to manifest, and you manifest uh, two guys somehow. Uh, and the manifesting, I, I tend to try to break things down a little bit about how, how they happen. Mm -hmm. Um and it's not just thinking about it. It's not just having a heart invested in it. What other elements help you manifest things? Yeah, I think that absolutely everything comes from a belief and how strong and accurate your belief is. Um, I think everything cascades down from that. Um, so once your belief is in alignment that it is possible, um, and then, you know, all it really takes is once you have had one happen because then our personality structure, our ego will go in and, and it loves to point at facts and, and historical data for things. So then that kind of helps uh, amp it up more like, see, I can do this. And then if we just continue to capitalize on any time that there is a synchronicity that we see or a coincidence. And I think that once we pluralize something and instead of make it just a, a one-off fluke and instead say and believe truly in our hearts, I see synchronicities, then all of a sudden they start doubling and then they start quadrupling and that kind of thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, if you've got this absolute belief with no resistance, then it can't not happen. <laughs> At least that's been my experience. I think resistance is the only thing that, that stops us. You think resistance? Uh huh. I think our belief system that kicks in our when we are, you know, if we don't believe we're going to see it or we're not that type of person or that someone else is that and I can't or whatever. To me, that's like a slam door. It kind of shuts off the it, it break or uh, cuts off the hose. I I true. My belief is that we live in nothing but pure synchronism. I don't think that there is anything that is not 
linked to our belief system. But I also think that it's not just our, what we're wishing and intending and just kind of from our brain. But I also think it's what it's mirroring also our trauma and the things that not all, not, we're not always completely aware of. And so if we believe that good things don't, you know, down in this subconscious, we believe that things can't happen for us. And at the same time, we're fighting or trying to do it, then, you know, we're, we're going to just get hit or miss experiences. But if we're completely in alignment and we work on our belief and our empowerment and that kind of thing, I, I think that synchronicities tend to increase more when that happens. I think, I think that's, I think that's right. And could you tell us more about what you mean by synchronism? You started to tell us about it. Yeah. Um, I had never heard that before until there was this channel named Bashar that talks about synchronism. Um, and basically his teachings are very reflective. Well, much more eloquent than the way I said it, but like, uh, he really talks about how everything is mirroring back and that uh, basically our belief systems and that, you know, that there are really patterns if you are looking for them and that um, if something doesn't seem to be going our way, then we ask the question, what must I be believing right now that isn't true or that my highest version of myself might be seen differently. And as soon as we realize that we can readjust, I, I think also too, that our, how we feel the the better that we feel, the more in alignment we are with the perspective of our highest self. And so when we are having some sort of distortion or are feeling disempowered or any less than, than, than the, um, the true essence of ourselves. That's when our, our field gets kind of knocked out of whack. And then the things that start feeding back in our reflective universe will, um, start to match that, but th that's still synchronistic. I mean, it, or it's still based on a pattern. It is still based on something that we can see because, you know, we, we, we rejoice when we get, you know, something that's exciting. Um, but we don't recognize sometimes the third time we've stubbed our toe in a week, how that could also be like, damn it, I keep stu stubbing my toe. Well, we have a belief and we're pluralizing that. And so stubbing your toe <laughs> is likely to, and we, we forget that that's part of the pattern. I think I, I also being neurodivergent, my brain really works with patterns. So I don't think it's everybody's maybe theme, um, or interest. It's, it's absolutely my interest. I've been seeing patterns my whole life in such big ways that, um, when you were saying, um, that everything has a little bit of mystery, I don't I, I agree with the statement, but I also believe you have to have a belief that there's mystery and that for me, it doesn't feel like mystery. Like almost anything that's happening to me, I immediately will completely put all of them together. And whether it's me just filling in the blanks for my own so that it matches whatever, but to me, it just doesn't feel like mystery, but it, it doesn't take any of the excitement away. I think that's wonderful. I mean, I, you're the first person I've heard who fills in the blanks. And that's what I want to be able to do. Let me tell you a story and see what <clears throat> how your uh, way of thinking might be involved with that. Mm -hmm. I got <clears throat> I got COVID um, uh, maybe six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I inadvertently didn't know I had it. And I may have infected somebody in a group that I was part of. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the COVID I had was was relatively mild, <clears throat> although it lasted for uh, a long time. I'm still having little bits of the cold, coldy kind of experience with it. But it uh, af after a couple of days, I was pretty much all right. 
this woman who is very much in touch with her guardian angels she has angels around her all the time mm -hmm. uh, went uh, the opposite way and mm -hmm. got very sick with covid mm -hmm. and i became um i became guilty about uh mm -hmm. infecting her even though i didn't know i had it i thought i had a bad cold when i was in this group Mm -hmm. But I, I'm pretty good at feeling guilty. And I'm wondering, and, and I saw, I thought I had something to do with it. And it was likely nobody else in the group got COVID as far as we know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's, look, that was the connection. So one of the problems she has is high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's in touch with these angels uh, that guide her. So I asked her husband by text, what, is her, what are the angels telling her about the high blood pressure variations and not, and not feeling good at all? Um, and he didn't respond to me, but it was soon after that, where I brought in her angels, my blood pressure went up. Mm -hmm. So it's as if I am running a parallel with mm -hmm. her blood pressure that somehow connecting with her angels made it so that I was participating in something that she's participating in. So we're kind of doing it together. Uh, yeah. And I wonder what you think about that. Oh my gosh. There's so many things we could explore with that one. Um, I think the, the, where do I go with this? I think well, my take on these times right now when it comes to the blood pressure thing is, um, well, okay, I'll link it with the angels. To me, very high frequency beings, when we are in touch with them, when we are, uh, I mean, they're all around us. It just depends on how much we want to engage and invite in that as an experience. Um, but they're very high frequency. And so what will happen is when we start engaging with them, this is the same with galactic beings is what I, they have a very angelic kind of quality to them too. And so when I'm around them or certain people around them, what, what it will be is anything in the way of our trauma and our belief systems that are out of alignment or distorted in comparison to theirs, their energy, which is, um, you know, very love-based and, and, lacking trauma. Uh, and so it kind of will bring up a lot of what needs to be healed in us just by being around those kind of energies. So, um, if you're connecting your be belief is aligning with the angel things and you're starting to do that, then the angels are more around you. And, you know, we are also, I, th I believe in what I call the, um, the apocascension, which is a word that I think I've coined, which is kind of a, just a perspective of earth right now, whether, whether we look out, um, you can look on TV and see absolutely an apocalyptic world, or you can see, um, a world ascending. And I see the ascension is just, um, a perspective change. And, um, but I do think that we are in a quickening right now. And I think that we are literally turning ourselves from caterpillars into not literally, but, uh, into, into butterflies. And so what I say, cause so many people are having physical issues right now and our trauma is just being squeezed out of us. And I try to tell people that are suffering with all these things. If we had a microphone and we were like, oh, I'm channel for you news. And we went over to a caterpillar that was inside of its, you know, goo. And we said, Hey, Troy, how are you doing today? Like, how are you feeling? He'd be like, I'm freaking dying. You know what I mean? Like if we're talking to someone in that process, well, we're in that process right now. And so I just feel like so much light is entering our body and we're going from a carbon based body to a crystalline body. And it's, it's a, it's a massive physical shift. It's, it's hitting us in big ways. So those would be my takes on what, what, what your situation is. Are you also asking like, why would something bad like getting COVID happen based on my patterning? Do you mean no, like no, that? I, yeah, I, okay. I'm, I think that I can go with some of that. It's it's just 
I uh, don't have to go through that. I'm going through the coincidence of my blood pressure going up mm -hmm. as I'm feeling guilty about her blood pressure going up. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. What, that's what, yeah. That's like it. That, I that's see. The, yeah. I, and I love patterns myself, and I yeah. I just want to keep it to that question that yeah. Uh, and and it and the blood pressure went up when I started asking about her angels. Yeah. So that yeah. that gave a link of her angels to me is what I thought might have happened, and that yeah. makes makes that makes me more linked to her. And what yeah. makes me think is that as I take care of my own blood pressure, that is going to be helping her with her blood pressure. Yeah. Hell yeah. Why not? And I mean, do you identify as being a physical empath? Um, is uh, this just with her or like, do you tend I, to I, I find that with a lot of people? I, I pick up stuff from people. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily that I get their disease or their problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I'm very. That's how I got this blood pressure going up in the first place. Is picking up the energy of this friend of mine who was performing. Uh, is like I was right there with her, so mm -hmm. I could feel her experience. Yeah. And not that her experience was a blood pressure raiser, but it was still a lot of intensity. Yeah. So yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much an empath uh, without kind of putting the label on myself. Yeah. And those those mirror neurons, you know, like and those, those iron away. Yeah. The thing that when I since you talk about angels, um, that's what I'm looking at as a pattern, as mm -hmm. as that uh, you have more familiarity with angel shit, and she does too, mm -hmm. um, and so that my asking about her angels is what seemed in time to be connected with my blood pressure mm -hmm. going up, even though there was some other event that helped that happen. So mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to, to see what you think about her angels and my contacting them and maybe my angels uh, connecting with her angels with the idea of the healing taking place, not just with her, but with me being of assistance to her by having taken on some of her blood pressure problems, it would appear, and yes. therefore making it less for her. Yes. Well, I definitely think that that's for sure possible. I think not only are you empathing and taking it in, in what do they call it? Like a tongling type of way, but I mean, yes, by, um, by proxy, this is something that I do a lot of times with my clients is, um, for people that especially have a belief that they can't feel, or, you know, they have issues with that kind of thing. A lot of times I am such a physical empath that, um, I can kind of jump into them and, um, find the channel that they're on and through them witnessing me or, or you know, watching me, they're able to feel and see and be able to caretake what is in them. So I absolutely think that it can be used to, to heal and it can be used to, yeah, empath or heal or anything. So of course, that's amazing. I love that. Especially if you can put it under that context context and just be like, yes, I'm taking this on and kind of like love blasting back. It sounds like you guys have an incredible connection and we all have little soul pods and little soulmates and, and that kind of thing. And they don't have to be, you know, our partners necessarily, but sounds uh, like you found someone in your tribe, your soul family. Well, uh, I hadn't been even thinking about her in that way. Uh, she, she's in a, a, a marriage that is wonderfully soul twin or mm -hmm. twin flame. I mean, they are one, the two of them. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing to to see that about them. So that's and I have not had that great a connection with her. So mm -hmm. that's not there. But I think this is mm -hmm. a way to break down what barrier there might have been with her and me to have a better connection with her, because mm -hmm. I think this is how we are connecting in this uh, traumatic high blood pressure thing uh that uh we are sharing with each other yeah well uh, that's uh that's cool 
that's um glad to talk with you about that and now if you don't if you don't if you can find if you can find her jenna i mean might the synchronicity fairy be around there someplace <laughs> so that our audience can who haven't seen you on tiktok um get some idea about her could you find the synchronicity fairy yeah course? a little little taste of synchronicity fairy well let's see one day she might be hello i am the synchronicity fairy my name is jenna and i got a little series where i come on every day and i give you a new synchronicity symbol a synchronicity is just something that you didn't know you were going to come across and then you stumble across this video and there it is and all you have to do is just give it a little consideration, give it a little emotion, put it in your little pocket, and tuck it away, and then have some patience, some faith patience. And soon enough, here in our reality, like this, this little object or item or whatever it's going to be is going to come into your reality in the kind of way that gives you a zing. It's going to feel meaningful. And then I always go to, are you ready for today's? and then it comes out so maybe we should do one right now yeah, we're doing I can right use now. my char my charm kit bag and see what's gonna happen here yeah you'll pick one out of there i just hopefully it's not one that i've um Ooh. okay let's do well there's a couple here we'll give a few we'll give tell, a few. tell us what you're doing oh so I'm a charm caster too, and this is my form of divination. So I do readings for people and all my charms have like little meetings and like open up different brain buckets on teachings and that kind of stuff. So I love it. Um, so one of the charms that came out, we've got brass knuckles. Actually, these aren't brass, but they're the idea of brass knuckles. <laughs> these are sparkly ones. So if you hear about brass knuckles, see brass knuckles, that kind of thing, you've hit your synchronicity. Um, and there's also, this is not going to be a hard one for this time of year for sure, but there's also a skull and crossbones. <laughs> um, so that's another one. And then this, I'm sure everybody's phones will blow up with, uh, this as an advertisement now. So no free, uh, publicity to Colgate, a little toothpaste. So if you see, obviously toothpaste, probably not in your bathroom, but if you see it, in a weird way, on the floor somewhere, if you're walking around, that kind of thing, you've hit your synchronicity symbol. So we'll play with those today. <laughs> All right, those are from your charm basket. Um, yeah. And you you have like, uh, how many followers do you have on your um, TikTok? Let's see, probably a little over 140,000 followers right now, but there's about four or five videos I think that are in the millions and the hashtag synchronicity fairy I just looked up today I think it's like 2.7 million people have hashtagged it so and I've had a couple people now you know out in public recognize me and that was that was absolutely that was so fun I loved it <laughs> yeah yeah so why don't you tell us how your series has impacted your followers Oh my gosh. I mean, that's the whole reason I do it is because um, they do tend to hit people right when they need it. And um, like a couple of my favorite stories, well, like one of them is uh, this person was going to visit a loved one who had passed and was uh, it was the day that the synchronicity symbol was binoculars. And I think it was like on their lunch break or something. And they, <laughs> they started walking. They were trying to find where the tombstone was. And they just kind of walked in this weird area and, and they looked down. I wish, dang, I wish I should have kept the picture and just shown you like this, but basically they, they had shot a picture and sent it back or did a, did a screen or duet video with me, but, um, they walked past this particular tombstone and on top of it, someone had left a pair of binoculars. Um, on the same day that that went out and that felt, you know, really meaningful for them as if their loved one had sort of left it for them. Uh, and then this same day also on binoculars, somebody had put a video up where they were sweeping 
uh, their kitchen or whatever. And they have a little kid and, and they were going to get the little dustpan like this. And they went like, what is this? And they picked it up. It's just like a little set of binoculars for a little toy or something. And that was cute. But, um, yeah, I would say that just how many people find a connection with someone that has passed or, or, you know, if they've been really having a bad day and they see it, it can really turn them around. And to know that something that I put out can make somebody's day feel a lot better or have them feel more connected to a loved one or their own divinity or their own power inside um, means absolutely everything to me. So it's great. And then the other thing that I like, um, because, you know, some people that are skeptical also will be like, well, yeah, you say something and then there's an algorithm. And of course, you're going to see it four things down. But then what I say to that is one, I think everything's an algorithm. I think we're, you know, like art imitating life, life imitating art. It's both ways. And that like maybe algorithms came to be because we're already in one. So, um, but that said, if, if people are really skeptical and they still um, want the zing, you know, it, that's, that's, that's the thing. It's the feeling you get when you get it. So if you go and see one of these things somewhere you're going to expect it. It's just not going to give you a zing. So therefore you didn't really, you didn't really get it. So if it's, um, so then what I say is, is if you see it online and you believe that it's just an algorithm, you're not getting a zing, then just wait. And then, and believe that you'll see it out of it. I have complete faith that it can come from wherever, you know, but my favorite ones too, are when people just had it already happen in their life. And then they come and see the video and I'm kind of, it's in, in the reverse because then it's like, why did that happen? It's not me doing it then. And I think that that can help for, um, for some people to feel even more like you're my synchronicity. And I, I love that too, when it happens reverse. And how do you think that affects people more generally about the way that the world works because part of what the synchronicity idea is is to suggest to people that our minds and our environments are much more connected than we believe they are yeah yeah i mean that's my aim is for everybody to realize that we're all connected and that um that it can kind of be a way to prove that I think that the zing that we feel is, again, a reflection of how our higher self speaks to us. And because we do have access to all potentials, if our belief system is aligned and if, if, you know, that that's why we get the zing, that that's, that's what it is, is that showing us our connection um, and how bringing anything into our awareness is possible. I believe, but I, again, you have to have the strong belief for it. Like I always say in my stuff, it's like, if you're a skeptic, you're going to hate me. Like, because you're, you're also reflecting the lava track or whatever, like perfectly because you're putting out disbelief. So you're going to also get the proof of disbelief, which in essence is still keeping in keeping with what I believe is synchronism. It's like, it's still it still works with my belief system if you believe that it doesn't work. It, That's what you'll get. It'll look like chaos. It doesn't to me. It looks a lot like order to me. Uh, oh. It's what do you when you, you use the word zing a lot? I mean, that's <laughs> part of your vocabulary. And yeah. I, I've heard you describe use that word uh, often uh, in your synchronicity theory TikTok things. But why don't you tell us what you mean by Zing? Yeah, I have a girlfriend named Katie Zamudio, and um, she was the first one that ever said it um, when she was really getting into um, seeing her own synchronicities or, you know, connecting with non-ordinary reality and things that were, were making her, setting her on fire. She would, she would say, Jenna, I got to sing. I got to sing. And so... It, I just loved it when she said it and I kind of took it and rolled with it and um, have actually been wanting to have an opportunity more publicly to give her credit for that because it did come from her. I love and it. What does a zing feel like? Yeah, I mean, 
so many other people have described probably a lot of your colleagues, like a wink from the universe or uh, what you hear God winks. I know you know God winks people. Um, it feels like to me, excitement. Um, I feel alive. I feel electric. It feels exciting. It feels like a confirmation. It feels right. It feels on track. It feels aligned. Um, maybe a blood pressure spike. <laughs> maybe what? Maybe what? I said, oh, maybe a blood pressure spike. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Maybe a, <laughs> maybe a blood pressure spike. Um, uh, Jung uses the word numinous, mm. uh, which was uh, to suggest it was a kind of a mini mystical experience, a feeling mm -hmm. of being of the oneness of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zing, Zing, Zing doesn't quite communicate that, but it, I think that's kind of what you're talking about as well. That's all, we're all part of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels right. It feels connective. It just reminds you because even the most skeptical person that doesn't have any woo woo in them, they still, they just call it coincidence, which is totally fine. I mean, you know, like whatever it is, it's still, they still get a feeling. They yeah. still, you know, the most skeptical person out there when they have a really awesome uh, sync or coincidence or whatever, they they talk about it. They share it with their friends. They they really get a lot out of it. And I, I don't really care one way or another what, what I like the phenomenon, whatever we call it. And I do think that it affects all of us, even if our belief system doesn't necessarily align. It's it's the, it's a feeling, uh, and mm -hmm. I I think that's uh, that's the most important part of that. It's a feeling of something, and it feels good, and it feels right. Uh, it's yeah. kind of a confirmation of something that uh, maybe we know and maybe we don't know. Yeah, uh, you've you've started uh, your own um, group where you're mm -hmm. encouraging people to uh, tell each other coincidence stories. I imagine. Uh, could you tell us about that? Yeah, that is an element of it. Um, so I'm a I'm a coach and do a lot of a lot of the woo kind of stuff. And so I started a Facebook group on just October first. So it's brand new. It's called Within dot 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 a group healing experience, and it is for people who really want to dig in to all non ordinary reality. Um, and for people who might be a little witchy, might be a little star seedy, might be a uh, coming out of a lot of organized religions, it doesn't. Um, and and for people who like spirituality and some religious ideas, but don't really like the dogma or the organizations that are out there. So it's basically within, and it's about kind of you know I give a lot of teachings that are uh, creating a framework. For people to sort of have their own mission statement, their own discovering their own values. And, um, you know, I do definitely, um, I've worked under a lot of different spiritual teachers and mentors, and I have taken all of them and genified them. And so I'm just kind of doing the whole cliff notes version of everyone I've ever worked with, um, because this is my special interest and I do it 24 hours a day. And some people have other nine to fives. I don't, I do this. So I'm just kind of like, let me just give you the the main stuff. And then they get to whatever their name, it would be like Bernie FI, you get to Bernie FI, whatever, um, whatever comes out and try it on for size. But I'm able to ask the right questions to get people to find their answers within so it's a community that's just starting and I have no idea what's going to happen with it. I'm intending to do like group meditations and light language and show and tell. And, um, and obviously an, a big element there will be to talk about uh, our synchronicity, their coincidences, um, dreams, that kind of stuff. And of course I, I'm referring all, all of the group to the amazing coincidence cafe i mean you've already got that kind of going so um there will be elements of that in my group but i really i think it's great i've had such a fun time 
um, with the Coincidence Cafe. So I would say, you know, anybody that is wanting to really share their stories, I love it there because you give the space and time to do it. There's the breakout groups and then everybody uh, is just so friendly. So I, I, I love how that's growing and can't wait to see what that turns into. I can't either. I think it can turn into something more than it is, but I'm not, I'm not sure what it is. So I'm, I'm listening to what you're doing with your Facebook page. And the difference with face, the Facebook one is that people don't do it in real time. Uh, I'm guessing, or do you, or do they? Um, yeah. So the, um, so it's a private group, but it's free to be in and you can just find it and if you're interested and, and say the name again, please. It's within. With, within, and then there's three dots and then a group healing experience. And, um, so far I'm doing like prompts too. So like I'm intending, like, you know, right now people are putting up bios and then saying three of their special interests. And so it's just got a community feel, all of that's free, but I'm going to be doing workshops in there pretty affordable, um, you know, maybe 40 bucks, that kind of thing for a two hour thing. And so there's where people will have opportunity to be on zoom calls and do live coaching. And, and just like we said earlier, like a lot of us heal, there's a reason we all match together. A lot of times we'll have the same kind of traumas. If you tend to go to one workshop and not another, I always think there's a reason why we're with the people we're with. And so there's, um, so not every, you know, it's, it's kind of an alternative, um, to enhance the other therapies and that kind of thing. I never tell people to do this in place of obviously seeing their therapist and that kind of stuff too. But I think coaching can offer a lot of uh, differences that you may not find in typical therapy and stuff. So because yeah. of the spiritual yeah. aspect and stuff. So typical therapy has a ways yeah. to go to get into and get into some of uh, what, you and many others who are spiritual teachers, but it's really a lot of psychological and interpersonal things mm -hmm. that are so important. And what tends to get neglected uh, by some spiritual teachers and spiritual followers uh, is ends up being called um, uh, spiritual bypassing. Mm -hmm. And you bypass the, mm -hmm. the hard work of getting along with yourself learning how to love yourself and learning how to get along with other people. And you are being all those psychological, interpersonal and spiritual uh, because they're wrapped up with each other as well as what your life mission might be and being able to find that. So you're, you're, you're doing um, great work, Jenna, even though mm -hmm. you're uh on the spectrum or neuro uh, neuro atypical uh, i mean it really takes being neuro atypical uh, uh to be able to do some of this stuff uh, one of the things mm -hmm. i love is patterns too uh, yes. and i love people who love patterns because they're so much fun uh, yeah. and patterns are the way if the world is confusing to you you get to be able to like make some sense out of them and so yeah. you love a pattern that tells you what's going on around here and, yeah. and one of them is that uh, meaningful coincidences are a key part of uh, existence here. So, so we're, we got about 10 minutes yeah. left here now, Jenna. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I know you're, I know blah, blah, blah about you, but I'd like to, I'd like to see what else you would like um, to talk about uh, in these last 10 minutes. Yeah. Well, I would, I'd love to just talk even about what you were just saying there in that, um, because they're, <laughs> I can be very disjointed in how I communicate and not because I'm stupid, but because I have so many different brain buckets that are linked that I'm putting them all together at, at huge rates. And then I have to translate that into, okay, no one else is going to understand why I put all that together. So now I have to like convert it into how does that make sense to someone else? And then that lag time can read as dumb sometimes or, or spacey. And sometimes I can be spacey and just forget things too. Um, but it, it's interesting because I will have long um, monologue type special, special interest kind of things due to my neurotype and that kind of thing. 
Um, and so a lot of my life, people have really been like, get to the freaking point or really irritated with my forms of communication. But I have now found all the people that also have brains like mine are kind of finding me. And I, I get a lot of, oh my God, nobody has ever explained that so well and made those links. And so um, I'm loving that that's happening. Um, so a lot of the people that are in the group are also neurodivergent. Um, I tend to, I think I have, obviously I can't diagnose, but let's just say, uh, I think three people that were actually even therapists. I was the one that told them that they were autistic just because I have special interest, to all of the stuff and gone through the whole hashtag on, on TikTok and that kind of thing. And that's just therapists. So I, I I'm probably up to about 30, 40 people that I'm like, because also part of it is I, it's really hard for me not to say, um, like I'm sitting with my hands, like, oh, you know, um, because I've recognized the pattern. So they'll see it in somebody else. I'm like, Hey, you might want to, you know, look, check that out. And it's just because we don't actually know, especially how it looks in late diagnosed females, especially because most all of it has been um, on seven-year-old boys that like trains or whatever, a lot of that. And, um, and it's hidden in, or is it doesn't present in the same ways for a lot of us. So, so like the fan girls out there, the girls that maybe collect horses, a, a lot of the anime thing, you know, there's, there's some, some things like that. Um, and, and we just tend to learn very early on, um, to mask. And so, I think that there's a big wave of people learning that and, and discovering a lot more about themselves. And, uh, well, and why I'm don't just you, why, don't you, why, don't you, why don't you tell us what you went through kind of quickly? There's kind mm -hmm. of the, the, the keys, the suggestions, the behavior patterns of some of these women that mm -hmm. suggest to you that they are neurodivergent, aut mm -hmm. autistic, most likely. ADHD yeah. go goes along with it on a, yeah. on a regular basis. Yes. I think so, 80% of the time they're saying no. Why don't you, because you said something about collecting horses and a few other things. Yeah. 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 Um, a lot of, uh, so um, sometimes like lining up dolls, lining up horses. Um, having just a deep special interest. It's kind of like, it's harder to see because, you know, if there's a, a teen that's talking about a boy band, nobody's gonna, that's gonna fly completely under the radar. But how you'll know the difference is if you talk to somebody about like a, a boy band they like, do they also know their birthday? Do they know their <laughs> brother's and mama's dad's name? Do they know all the tour dates? Mm, that's usually... A, a pretty big indicator. Again, anime for some reason is huge. Usually if someone's really into that gaming is a huge, interesting uh, um, thing. Um, you know, cosplay because of the masking element. Um, actually, believe it or not, a lot of the really done up makeup artists, pin up kind of girls, oftentimes there's a big pattern with that. And again, I, you know, I have to make mention, this is just something that somebody that is not licensed in any way has just discovered and found the patterns and then kind of watch them come to their own diagnosis and be like, ding. <laughs> well, well, as you, as you apologize for your lack of uh, whatever training you might call it, um, but your observation skills are good. And um, one of the characteristics of usually male uh, Asperger's, which you mm -hmm. don't use anymore, but autistic, yeah. high functioning, yeah. particularly is the little professor. Yes. Who has a, a particular, who has a particular interest and wants to tell everybody about it. Uh, and that's not unlike um, the boy band and knowing uh, the, the birthdays of his uncle uh, is like, mm -hmm that that's again getting deeply into something in a very enthusiastic way yes so yes and the girl the equivalent is little i mean it could be boy too but like is little therapist i've heard that being used for also a lot of people get into it because we we care about the human dynamics and we need to study faces and to be able to like 
be able to have our mask to be able to show up in the world. And, you know, especially would women you are very say social. That, would you say that again, Miss Jen of America, because that is fundamental to how I've gotten along in this world. Just that one. Yeah. I'm a therapist. Yeah. I'm a therapist. Yeah. yeah. Have you they, checked they, to see if you might? I am. I am. Yeah. No. Okay. So, so you're diagnosed autistic? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 That yeah. makes sense to me. I love your brain buckets. I also watched another one of these and learned about your license plate thought. And I was like, oh, that was so amazing. And then, you know, I just have always agreed with like, I want to know what people think, but I want to know more how they think. I want to, I want to see the landscape of their brains. And I know that you're so into that. And I could just freaking geek out with you forever. Like, I mean, you would be a, a desert island friend that I would like to have. And I think we could just sit and talk and never stop. <laughs> A geek a geek out about geek out yeah about other people's minds about brains yeah about like brains. how you're thinking and what that looks like you know in 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 systems in brain buckets in patterns in just all the things I so mean, we, we we would end up doing that with each other on that desert island yeah where i would be asking you and you would be asking me and i would be drawing maps of how mm -hmm. your mind works which i've been starting to do anyway yeah and it's like uh it, it's so interesting to see the intricate structures and patterns in minds and try to see how they're connected with each other uh and, and that that i love doing that yeah me too. Uh, it's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, that that gets to um, another favorite thing that I was related to that is uh, telepathy. Mm. Is that uh, how is telepathy re related to what we just talked about, knowing the minds of others? Yeah. Um, well, because I have things filed in my brain buckets, telepathy to me is right next to the word telepathy, which is kind of favored for me because telepathy to me is just kind of passing thoughts. And I think that a big talent of mine is it's not only a thought passing, but I'm full packets of empathic emotion along with the thoughts. And I think that that, that packet exchange or, or downloading is even prettier, more expansive. More... I agree. I agree with that. And yeah. that's how I got into it is with yeah. my father. My father was choking. I was choking 2000 miles away. So yeah. you, you, uh, I, I, I call it simulpathy. You call mm -hmm. it teleempathy, which mm -hmm. is a nice name for it also. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And, and do you pick up the emotions of others at a distance? Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Yes, you like do. Too much, kind of like, yeah, it's yeah a, it, it can, can be a problem. Bit, it yeah. can be a, a problem. I think that's <laughs> what I've just done with the yeah. one with the blood pressure thing. Uh, yes. I think I, I allowed myself to do it because I was feeling bad about how she was feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, something happened that mm -hmm. triggered my ability then, which I call it an ability, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but to pick up what, what was going on with her. And that's mm -hmm. teleempathy in the terms that you use. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the, these, as now that I've, um, we're coming to the end of this, and uh, mm -hmm. it's very clear to me that uh, your mind is very interesting to me as well. Uh, and, and it's, it, we call you crazy uh, to just to, to be a little more um, specific about it. Um, as I am, and it's a craziness that is not uh, organized and linear. It's like it's uh, appears to be all over the place. Yeah. And, and I think if you listen to the beginning of this, you were kind of all over the place, a little hard to organize. But I needed, uh -huh. to, but then we got connected somehow, and you really got there. And and that's that's what it takes sometimes mm -hmm. for minds like each of ours to be able to to be able to make sense is find a mind that is picking us up who that we can then talk to who that then we know that we're registering something and that mind helps us organize our yeah. own mind when we're talking about something and i know we need to wrap up but i want i i actually want to go over that the reason the pattern for that is because the stories that i told you i've told so many times with great detail at like two hour lunches with girlfriends at the time. So what 
so the 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 script is so much longer than what I needed to try to condense it down to. And that's what you're seeing me do is trying to edit the script for the sake of the timing, which doesn't work so well when I can just kind of riff on something right here that I don't have a script on. And if you notice too, with the synchronicity fairy, I have the pretty much same script all the time. So that's another big indicator. People tend to find themselves in jobs where they will have scripts a lot of times um, when they're neurodivergent. So thank you for pointing that out. And yes, it, it is a lot easier for me to just kind of be in the now and riff with whatever is going on. If I don't have a script, it, I, I definitely seem a little bit more here. Yeah. I, 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 or what you were trying to do is, is edit a script you already had yes, on, yes. on the fly while you were doing it. Right. And, that, and that made it, that made it difficult too. Yeah. So what we're what we're doing um, now here towards the end, which is mm -hmm. uh, really important, is is uh, trying to know each other's minds. Mm -hmm. And what when I've tried to help people with uh, our high functioning autism or Asperger's, mm -hmm. um, I make them try to answer this question. When they're talking with somebody, uh -huh. I'm asking them to ask themselves this question. Uh, what do you, the other person, think I think of you? What is the uh -huh. other? So I have to think about what you think about me. Uh -huh. and, and that requires being able to know your mind generally yeah. and then finding in your mind the representation of me and mm -hmm. then being able to articulate that representation of me in your mind so that I can talk to the me that you are representing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you want, are you going to do it with me first or you want me to do it with you first? Well, or, I, I was just the question. It was just the question. Oh, okay. Asked. I thought it, oh, but, okay. But, but if you'd like to do it with me, go ahead. Oh my gosh. Okay. But so I do love that. And um, I think that that also obviously will filter through our own trauma or what we, you know, are worried about that people think about us and you know, that kind of stuff. But I would think that you, that I probably am, uh, that you could sense in me that I have a lot of different brain buckets, a lot of interests, um, and that we come to, or have, have a lot of things in common, but different, um, vernacular lexical, you know, the whole way that we, that we see them. Um, I would think that there was something in me that interests you enough and caught your eye that you reached out. Um, I would hope that you like me as a person, but I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how else to, to answer. Like, what, what am I missing? You can, you can fill in the blank. I know it's the point is what you think, what you think I think of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's more the yeah. idea yeah. To, to, to be able to describe it accurately is. I think you value me and I appreciate that. I, I hope that's the case. Well, and that's, I think that's, that you can, yeah. I think that you also probably think that I ha am in touch with an aspect of, uh, you know, TikTok and certain groups of people that are going to be able to connect in, in a lot of ways. And so I think that um, I can be a really good resource for you. I think you can be a good resource for me. And, you know, I, I definitely think that there's some soul contractual stuff with, with the certain people that we meet. I feel a very deep connection with you in that way, um, which again, th those kind of things don't have to be romantic in any way. They're just, you know, like like a soul pod, like a, a family, a, a social memory complex is a word that I like to use for that. <laughs> social memory complex. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, this 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 romance is a wonderful um, and limited <laughs> limited number of people, but we can be romantically intellectual and not or mentally. Yeah. Uh, we we can love each other's minds, and we can love each other's minds and hearts. Yes. And that's the future uh, that I'm looking for is that, yeah. that 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 we don't get caught up too much in the more general 
genital part of romance, right. which is so advertised in the media in so many different ways. But yeah. this heart mind connection mm -hmm. uh, is something where you can be uh, uh, a real flirt with if that you can uh, be a real uh, like uh, hang. Uh, you can do a lot of people that way. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and they can do it with you and it's clean and it's fun and it's good for everybody and it it increases the sense of connectedness that we all have with each other because i think this heart mind thing is the way we will be able to do what did you call it it's not apocalypse yes what did Apocacent you call it? ascension apoc ascension yeah apoc ascension yeah how do you spell apoc uh, ascension okay i got it so, yeah and then um yeah so intellectual intercourse intellectual with love in it heart, yeah. the, with a heart in it yeah is the heart well, we, we got to come up with a, a, a word that encompasses that even more yeah uh, that does both heart heart and mind. heart heart led intellectual i don't know that's close heart intellectual heart intellectual heart intellectual intercourse, heart intellectual intercourse. <laughs> And it's not just intellectual, but yeah. I think we can need a different word for that too. Yeah. But intellectual is a good, it's a good, uh, <laughs> is a good start for us. Intellectual, okay. Um, uh, Jenna, um, you know, I, I stumbled across you, and here we're stumbling again, but much more in a coherent and uh, way than we had in meeting each other, uh, getting to know each other. Uh, is really wonderful and you are you are very much in the spirit very much Aww. in the spirit of what i'm trying to help happen in the world uh oh, you are you. you're welcome you are doing it you are uh an ambassador to synchronicity and you call yourself that as the synchronicity fairy so i wonder if maybe we could have a goodbye from the synchronicity fairy um, okay, let's see. Which classes do I use before? One of my big things is the different classes. Let me know when it comes in for you. Remember, we have got, what have we got? I can't remember. What do we have? Oh, we have the brass knuckles. We have the cross and skull. And the toothpaste in a weird way. Let me know when it happens. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. You're welcome, Jenna. This psychosphere is a mental atmosphere like a hologram of cosmic consciousness.